guys, so we're going to take another look at Stable Diffusion. Now, in my first videos, I looked at the text to image capabilities of this tool. And this is an AI tool used for generating images. So you basically type in a description of an image, and then you can then further fine tune that prompt uh, to get better results. And it will continue to refine the image based on how you tweak the prompt that you put in. And it gives you a lot of control over all of the different features and parameters that control how the image is created. Now, with that, you can also use what they call image to image creation as well. It's where you can use existing images to create new images, or you can use uh, text to image generation to modify existing images. So I'm going to look at these features today. And this is basically just going through the tabs in the, the Stable Diffusion UI, and it's going to give you an idea of the kind of things that you can do with it. So I'm going to be working with uh, the same models that I worked with last time in my first video where I was looking at how to create an image of a dog. And then today I want to kind of fine tune the results that it gives me by using some of these other capabilities. And we're just going to kind of look at those and uh, look at how you can use those to get more fine grain control over the existing tools that you already have. So here is Stable Diffusion. And I've already generated this image right here. And I generated it using this prompt. I used dog, golden, frisbee, and park. And it generated a picture of a golden retriever. Uh, not the best image in the world. See, it's got like an extra leg here and it's some of the artifacts from using uh, AI. It looks like it's actually kind of a combination of like maybe a, a golden retriever and a German shepherd. So I can fix this image if I want to. Uh, I can also work with it if it's been saved as well. So this is kind of what I want to use to as a basis for uh, working with this particular tool. So the image to image tab is this one right here, but there's one feature I really like about Stable Diffusion, and that is this PNG info. PNG info is basically the ability to take an existing image that you've already created and basically pull back the prompt that you use to create it. So if I come back over here and I have these two images that I've got in my uh, output folder, so Stable Diffusion is my root folder, and then in that you have a text to images folder and in that you'll have things arranged by date and then you can go down into the date uh, that you generated an image you can select that image and open it and it embeds the prompt as one of the pieces of metadata inside of the png and so it'll show you not only the image but also the parameters that you use to create that image and so you have one of several different options here you can do uh, send to text image, which basically allows you to reproduce the image if you wanted to. So you could come over here and send it to uh, the text image right here, or you can send it to image to image or to end paint. And uh, image to image and end paint are the two features that I kind of want to look at today. So if I click on send to image to image, it's basically going to populate all of the parameters in the image to image context with the data that was in that PNG. Now, you don't have to use an existing PNG. You could load any image uh, into this as well. It doesn't have to be using that. You can just simply select an image, but it doesn't load the prompt and it doesn't load any of the parameters. So if you wanted to work with, say, a JPEG image that you have saved somewhere on your hard drive, you could definitely load that in and then customize all this as well. But that just gives you a nice way to uh, kind of work with the image. So. Uh, if you wanted to work with this image, there's a lot of things that you can do with it with image to image, um, the image to image tab. So you have image to image, which basically just gives you the ability to take an image and use that kind of as a baseline for creating new images. So if you were to load an existing image, uh, you can do that through the PNG info, but you could also load up any image doesn't have to have be a PNG generated by this. And you can click one of these two buttons over here. This one right here is called interrogate clip. And then this one right here is called interrogate deep buru, which are both tools that are AI based that do feature detection on an image and that will generate a prompt. So I can click on this and it will run an AI model against that image to, to basically populate this prompt right here with what it finds in the image based on the model that it's using. And so um, it will generate usually a fairly decent uh, prompt uh, from an existing image. So you can see that it's um, it's an animal, it's blurry, blurry background, uh, chain link things. I'm not sure where it got that from, but a field, flowers, foliage, uh, outdoors, you know, mouth, um, photorealistic plants, it's all these different things that it's using. 
to detect what's in this image here. Now, of course, you can edit this, so you could remove any one of these uh, particular words and refine this prompt if you so choose. And so that's one way to do it. The other one is to use this, this option right here. And this generates not one that's based on like keywords, but one that's based off of a more prose-like description or sentence that's describing what's going on in the image. So both of these can work with stable diffusion. Um, but in my experience, the one that uses keywords tends to be a little bit more easy to control the actual image output than just a standard description that has like prepositions and linking verbs and linking words and all the different kinds of things that you might have in a more proper sentence rather than just keywords. It also takes longer to generate the prompt as well uh, using this particular model. So it can be a little bit more time consuming if you were wanting just to do object detection use the, uh, this one right here, and this one generates just more of a caption, if you will, for an image. So this is the prompt it generated, a dog running with a yellow Frisbee on, on a field of grass with leaves on the ground and grass and so on. It did generate a fairly accurate description of it, but like I said, that one is not the best um, description uh, that I would use for fine tuning a particular output. So this was the prompt that I actually used to generate this image, but on image to image, what I can do is I can modify the prompt slightly to yeah, change context a little bit. So let's use the same prompt, but instead of having a park, I'm going to put this dog maybe in a forest. So it's basically going to take the uh, elements of this image and with this prompt right here, it's going to then try to create a new image uh, by, based on this image, but based on my inputs, also take those into account to create a new image from this one. So let's hit generate and we'll come back when this is done. So here's the output image from this input image. We get a better quality image. It doesn't have that fifth foot and it's also in the forest setting that we wanted. So I now want to modify this image when you can, of course, download this image or upload a new image if you so choose. I'm going to work with this one right here. So I can then just simply send this to uh, the InPaint tab or you can simply download or upload an image to this. But if you are working on one from image to image, you can just send it to, to, to the InPaint tab. So once you have it in the InPaint tab, what you can do is uh, you can highlight an area of the image that you want to change. So I'm going to change this right here from a Frisbee to a soccer ball. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, what I want to do by doing this is everything outside of this, I want to basically preserve the image. I want to keep the dog, but I'm going to change this object. So I'm going to put in soccer ball up here in the prompt uh, for my InPaint and uh, let it um, generate a soccer ball where I have this InPaint uh, selected. And uh, that will then allow me to have the golden retriever now chasing a soccer ball. So let's go ahead and generate this and see what it produces. So here is the image that I started with, which was this golden retriever. And then I have this image that it generated uh, with a soccer ball in it. Now I want to modify this image now. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and load it up using InPaint Sketch, which is a slightly different tool than InPaint. And what it basically allows you to do is just draw on the, the image itself. So um, this one right here is the one with the soccer ball. And with InPaint Sketch, uh, you, you have a brush like you did with InPaint, but this one allows you to kind of basically doodle on the image. So if you want to put something on the image, you can kind of draw it as you think it ought to be. And from there, you can create some interesting looking uh, things with it. So I'm going to try to put some sunglasses on this. So let's uh, draw some... Um, uh, sunglasses and see if I can get some sunglasses on a dog by putting some uh, black dots over his eyes and then um, maybe drawing them back like that. And I'm sketching the sunglasses. And then I can change this up here to sunglasses uh, for my prompt and then click generate. And hopefully this will uh, generate an image of a dog chasing a soccer ball wearing sunglasses. So it took me a couple of tries, but I finally got it to uh, generate an image that was uh, kind of what I was looking for. So sometimes you have to do that. Um, so I drew the, the sunglasses right here and now that's, it's a kind of a, a low res image, but you can see that it did draw sunglasses on the dog and it went from, and we also edited in that, that soccer ball. So this is the kind of thing that you can use uh, the 
image to image generation and also the in painting tools that are part of the suite. And it's a pretty powerful set of tools that allow you to create custom AI generated images uh, using prompts and then some of the other kinds of things that we see here. So again, something that you might want to play with if you're interested in this kind of thing for AI image generation. So I hope you found this to be a set of interesting tools that you can use for AI generation of images. So these are some of the more powerful tools that you can have with uh, AI image generation. Again, this does require a decent GPU and it's not exactly a trivial setup, but it's something that you might want to consider if you're interested in this kind of thing. And it will be certainly something that I'll probably be using for other kinds of workloads for illustrations or for ideation on image creation and things like that, just for uh, to kind of play with it some more. But I'm also going to be looking at how you can use uh, AI generation for sound in a future video. So pay attention to that, like, and subscribe, and always comment. I'll be glad to answer questions. And as always, thanks for watching. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. You can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below. You can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on Twitter at the one mule. And as always, thanks for watching.